Okay, your name? Raymond Baker. Okay, and your hometown, were you born and raised here? No, in I was born in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I came here at five years of age. Wow, and the name of your parents and their occupation? Mildred and Sandy Hill. Mother nurse, father worked at um, cold storage. Okay, and tell me about life growing up in Detroit. It was lovely. What Beautiful. neighborhood did you grow up in? Brewster Projects. Right, tell me about the Brewsters. What era was this? Years. This was in the they stay open middle 40s. Stayed open 27 years. It was in the middle 40s. I came in 46 to around 52 or 53. Oh, that's a, that's a long time. All my uh, childhood years. That's where I met Bobby Wilson. Uh, you know what? It was gangs, but, but the gangs did did kill you? No, they they would you, cut you, but they would not kill. You. Catch you, beat beat you beat on the arm, or beat you on the leg, put frogs on you. They could have been cocky. They yeah. called cocky selling papers over in Burn Avenue. <laughs> cocky was Alfonso Fudge. <laughs> great guy, great guy. Great guy. Was he a super, super uh, athlete as well, or yes, he he was a football player. Super football. Player. For what school? Miller. Miller. Wow. To Miller. And I understand Miller uh, was a high school, not a middle school, right? It, the rate, way it became a high school, it was an elementary and middle school first. Right. And then as the black population grew, white people did not want black. Too many blacks going to eastern, southeastern, and northeastern. So they opened up Miller as a high school to take in blacks and dagos. Wow. It did did it work? Do you think yes, it, it worked? Yes, it did. It worked very well. Wow. Wow. And then um what other uh great schools or schools you attended besides Miller? Was it just basically That was Miller? a high school. Miller was a high school. So what was your grade school? My <coughs> Excuse me. Uh -huh. My grade school was in Lincoln. Lincoln? Is Lincoln. that still is that still It's open? still in existence. Lincoln, yeah. Oh wow. If do you I'm, know where Spain Junior? Yes, yes, yes. That old building right next to Spain. Yeah. Is Lincoln Elementary School. It still has the same name? Yes. Well they they oh, wow. <laughs> just, just Spain it became Crockett. But, Crockett, but Crockett. Lincoln is still there. Yeah. Wow. And um Tell me some of the, you say you were born <coughs> born and raised basically in the Brewster um, Project. Douglas Project. No, 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 there is a difference. Oh, tell me, please enlighten me. Brewster Project was from 1935 on. They did not start building the Douglas until 1951. <laughs> And it is a difference between Brewster and Douglas. Wow, so now they just bunched it together and call it... Brewster Douglas. Wow, but the Brewsters was in existence first. Yes. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt scooped up the first uh, shovel of dirt to start building Brewster Projects. Wow. And if you would like a picture of her doing that, yes. go to the main library going to the Burton Collection and look up Brewster Project and you will see a picture of her scooping up the dirt to start building real wall. They, they were building the... Douglas and the Jeffreys in the same year, 1951, they broke ground for both. East Side Douglas and West Side Jeffreys. Okay, and when do you think the Herman Gardens came in? Herman Gardens was in the 1940s. It was an old project. It was really integrated. That was one of your first right. integrated projects. Well, I heard Parkside was. Parkside, Parkside started was on the far east, east side. And it was for military, white military uh, families. And then later, after the riot, that's when they, they opened the floodgates well, and let most of us African Americans so come in. I didn't know anything about the military for Parkside. Okay. All I knew was on the east side. Right. And then you also had Sojourner Truth. That home. was in Kona Gardens. And those were also listed under the military. No, that was all black. All black, but somewhat military roots, I heard. It was no 
We didn't have any military well, groups well, here. Cass, Cass, Cass had a, a military. Cass had a military. The only thing we had was Fort Wayne, and that's where you got inducted into the Army. Right. You were telling me about them soldiers on the phone. Yeah, I, <laughs> every weekend, the soldiers who got out of Fort Wayne, yeah. they used to let them out. And they used to come up and down Hastings Street. Yeah. And, and it, you, you couldn't even hardly walk down the street. I'm in I'm a Navy game because they had the submarine out of Bell Isle. Yeah. And they would come in and bring the money in. And look, it was penny arcades, everything there. You know, there was hustlers in there and everything. But you know what? That's where your pimp that got came in. Right now, define, define pimp because it's a difference from the pimp back in the days from the pimp today. Pimps in that, back in the day. They were considered somewhat businessmen, right? They were businessmen and they... Uh, Respected. They took care of their ladies who were the street walkers, and they even supplied them with a house and, they, and took care of them 100%. Wow. And they didn't beat them up either because if they would be beating up a prostitute, the men would come out and say, take it into the house. We don't want to see it in the streets. Yeah. Wow, and what did they call the women of the evening? Madams or what, what did they no, call wait, them? A madam and a prostitute is two different things. A madam ran a house. The prostitute worked the house. And it was all legal back then? No, it was not legal. It's never been legal. They got picked up there, they can go down and take They go down, tips. pay their 25 But they were respectable business men and women though. Well, that see, profession was. Your most pro respected businessman was your neighborhood number man. Because if people needed a loan or anything, they would not go to a bank, they wouldn't go to the finance company, they'd go to the number man and borrow the money. Wow. And then they, he'd give it back to them. They'd now what if you w wasn't able to pay it back? Did he break some legs and arms? Oh, no, he, you always paid him back. There's no such thing as what neighbor. You found a way to pay him back. Okay. <laughs> Charles Prince was boxer. Was he from the Brewster uh, Douglas? Eddie no, Jack. no, he lived down on Illinois in St. Edward. Okay. What are some of the um, the legends that came um, out of the, Bru the Brewster Douglas that you could recall? Out of the, it was only Brewster. Brewster. Ah, uh, the legends. Boxers, singers, writers, radio personalities, dancers, etc. Businessmen, women. They were all... We know about, Bobby Hall. Tell them about the Mixon stuff. Chip and them. They, now they were, <laughs> the who? The Mixon brothers. Was they athletes? No. What is this? What is it called? Vietnam Veterans Headquarters. On Woodward. No, it, it sounds familiar. Tell Woodward me about and it. Edmund. Tell me about it. Okay, that used to be the, the most segregated restaurant in the city. They didn't even want black bus boys. Everything had to be white there. Black wasn't allowed to go in there. They wasn't allowed to work in there or anything. But see, they had to let the blacks in there because when we would go in there and swim, we'd get to No, we're talking about the restaurant now. Tell me about the Big Four. The Big Four was Detroit Police Department. It consisted of three plain clothes policemen and a uniformed driver. And all they did was go up and down the street, patrol street, keeping people off the street. Off the street. Yes. Tell us about the project. Shorty. Oh, Shorty Black. Shorty Black. Shorty Black, he was uh, your first. But, 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 but he he was a security was, guard. He was, he was right. But he was never a policeman. No, he was never a policeman. Until he was a serial. he died and they gave him. They gave and him he never. Wore a gun and he was only like five foot five, but every kid in the neighborhood was scared of him. Respected him. They, yes, Shorty they black. Did. Shorty black. The neighborhood security guard, and he was um over here at the Brewsters. Yes, he was at Brewster. Oh wow, that's some history. Now um tell me about uh the ninety uh, the 1967 um Detroit riot. That was not a riot, that was a civil disturbance because black people and white people looted and robbed together. Right. It was not 
a right. It was a civil disturbance right. against the government. Wow. So it wasn't just blacks. No. It was everybody. So I hear that it wasn't about um, civil rights or race. No. So what was it about? Don't tell me about the uh, the girl was, they thought that they threw okay, in the you know how they uh, they had um, Huey Brown, eight, I mean eight, H. Rap Brown, um, Stokely Carmichael, and it was really a civil disobedience. That was all. So did it change anything for the positive to, versus the negative? No, it, or it what? did every negative. Everything was negative because all the people did was burn their own neighborhood down. Why did they do this? On the west of Woodward, and the black is on the east of Woodward. Yeah. But wow. when it started, it first started out at Bell Isle. That was 1943. That's a different one. That's the one where they claimed it. Up. So you had to be like five or six at the 1943. We're talking about the. the six. I was six so in the, 1943. So, so the 43 one was the one with the rumor race, about the that rumor. That was a race riot. Oh, the 43 was. A race riot. 67 was a civil disobedience. Everybody was stealing. Everybody was stealing with everybody. Okay, and I also heard that the 67 riot um, started a spark. Um, with one of the underground bars, um, no, the big four supposedly no, had no, went in there it and was broke. An after hour joint. Oh, <laughs> underground. Yeah, it was an after hour joint. He went to school with the guy that they sent up there. Yeah, uh, Charles Henry. Yeah, he went to school. He came out of Miller. He was the commander. Oh wow. Right. Okay, well tell me um, a little bit about uh, Black Bottom versus Paradise Valley. What was the difference or was Paradise it Paradise Valley was only consisted of six blocks. That's all it was. Paradise Valley, it had maybe seven bars, a bowling alley. No, and that was it. Can you name some of the businesses um, in Paradise Valley back in the day? You had the 606 bar, the Rainbow, the Three Sixes bar, the Turf bar, and El Sino. Wow. And that that was that Parad was Paradise Valley. That was Paradise Valley. Now what? Sonny Wilson was he Paradise Valley or Black no. Bottom? Sonny Wilson had the Forest Club. That's right. Oh, Forest and Haston. Now what what side of town was that? That's, that that was west, Haston up north. Hey, so so we'll consider on Paradise Valley side or Black Bottom? No, neither one. Oh wow. It was just But, but we knew it we knew of that and then we traveled back and forth from here See, to there. Sonny Wilson had one of the bigger he had a bar, a bowling alley, and a skating rink. And he also believed in black pop. The reason that he went out of business because he allowed Paul Robeson to speak at his bar. After that, the city condemned the bar because they didn't want him to speak. Wow, that's deep. Wow, now tell me a little bit about um, Haston Street. I heard that you guys had a streetcar that traveled up and down. You had to put tokens in and... Yeah, well, the city had all streetcars. Streetcars were all over the city. Like buses. No, the buses replaced the streetcars. Oh. The rapid transit that they're trying to put it, they're putting in now the streetcar. That's the same thing we had 65 years ago. Oh wow! Just making a way back, huh? Yes. Wow. And right now, if you want to see the streetcars that ran up and down Woodward. 60 years ago, go to Mexico City because they still use them in Rome. Oh, wow. Wow. And then, um, do you know anything about Idlewild, Michigan? Yes. Tell me about it. Idlewild was a black resort area because back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, blacks wasn't allowed to go to white resorts. So they created their own, which was Idlewild. And you had clubs, cottages. There's a 
Ideal Summer Resort. Wow, have you ever been up there? Yes. Oh, wow. Matter of fact, you still go. Oh, wow. <laughs> I tell you what, it's coming up. They're having an odd wild conclave here in March. And all the Idlewilders have been here for a convention like I won't let you know. Please do. I would they, love to attend. I know it's the third weekend in March, and it's going to be at uh, the Double Tree on Southfield and Ford Road. Oh, wow. Thank you for that.